So let's just get an in-depth look on the general outlook for the Gulf region. I'm joined now by Dr. John Safianakis, Chief Economist of Bang Saudi Francie. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Before we get to the broader outlook, I actually wanted to start by asking you about the World Cup. Merrill Lynch saying it's going to cost Qatar, what, $65 billion. We'd have several estimates on that already. But how much of a challenge is it going to be to figure out how the country will benefit from all that investment after the World Cup? I mean, what do you do with all those hotel rooms when the tournament's over? Well, you're right. I mean, it's already overburdened with a lot of hotels and a lot of empty towers. Uh, Qatar has or Doha has about uh, 200 towers idly sitting in, in Doha. So the benefit here is not direct. I think it's indirect. Basically, Qatar will be globally recognized. Uh, Qatar is already recognized through Al Jazeera Channel and now it will be globally recognized for the World Cup. So basically, that is the real value that Qatar is placing. Whether it has the money to spend, well, again, why are they buying a lot of real estate outside? What is the usage and utility of that? I think that basically they'll be able to cough up the money. It's as much as what the Qatar Investment Authority has invested abroad in foreign assets. So as long as they have a small population of maybe around 200,000 people, if not less, they'll be able to cough up with the money. Now, you're, of course, talking to us from Riyadh. Talk me a little bit about Saudi Arabia's economy, your assessment of how it's doing and, indeed, the outlook for 2011. Well, look, uh, this is a real economy. It is the largest economy in the Middle East. Uh, it should be doing very, very well in 2011. There is solid growth, of course. Uh, definitely the downside risk is if oil prices dip, if they go to $50 or $40, but the likelihood of that is very, very implausible. So I think that they will be able to get a lot of private investments, and definitely the government is spending big time. They're spending $400, $400 billion since 2008, so the capacity to withstand such a huge investment outlay is very, very definite. You mentioned there their dependency on oil prices. How is non-oil growth in Saudi Arabia? Look, last year they grew by 3.5%. It was not bad. It's not as high as pre-crisis levels prior to 2008. This year they should grow around 4, 4.2%. Next year around 48 Definitely there is a level of deleveraging as a result of the global financial crisis but they're doing far better and they have the size and capacity. Remember, this is a country of 28 million people mm -hmm. versus Qatar, which is much, much smaller. And Mr. Safinakis, when we speak about overall growth, not just in Saudi Arabia, but in the wider region, how strongly does, does geopolitical risk figure in your thinking? Definitely, there is always the risk, no doubt, events in Iraq and the future of Iraq, whether it eventually becomes an extension or a province of Western Iran, is of concern. And what happens to Iran itself and how the Western community and the Gulf states manage the problem there. Definitely the issue of Yemen is of concern, not just to Saudi Arabia, but to all the Gulf states and also the future of Lebanon. Because, as you know, Lebanon uh, is uh, not doing politically very well. So there is concern, but also we shouldn't overstate that this is a region of perpetual instability. <laughs> Certainly, and, and that could be a, a, a conversation as itself. Uh, thanks very much, John Safianakis, uh, Chief Economist of Bank Saudi Francie. Appreciate your time.